Yeah, Excellency, Mr. Minister, when we speak about the problem of talent in the Arab world, we must start with education. Some may think that if you get additional degrees, it will enhance your opportunity in the labor market. But it is the situation is different in most Arab countries. The rate of uh, unemployment among uh, uh, university graduates is higher than the rate of unemployment among other people. What can you tell us about the level of education in Palestine and to what extent is this education graduating people who are ready for the labor market? First, allow me to say that all the educational system in the Arab world uh, overlaps in terms of the problems. Uh, we need courage to change, and we need to recognize that the existing educational systems cannot create a generation that is capable of uh, entering the labor market. Let's ask ourselves how many of our children every morning like to go to school. The second question, how many of those children, when they wake up and know that there is no school for some reason, are happy? The answer will be around 80%. This is an, a thorny issue. Why don't our children like school? And why is demand on school among children is sometimes very little? First, because we have established in the third world the culture of the uh, certificate. The children learn for the test and from the test for the certificate. And there is the pressure of the parents for this academic uh, uh, qualification until they get the certificate. And also the uh, culture of uh, entrepreneurship is almost absent in education. Thirdly, a vocational and technical education is almost absent because it is the victim of the social discrepancy. Everybody wants to be doctors and engineers, and they do not heed on uh, technical and uh, vocational training. And the last point is the social aspect with, as the society judges people based on their certificates and tries to starts to classify them socially. That's why in Palestine we said the things cannot persist as such and we ch changed our curricula totally. Now, on the 20th of August, we will present a new uh, uh, curriculum that takes into consideration ethics and civics and also vocational training and also business education because we want to create a generation that is capable of breaking the stereotype. In the Arab world, we put our children in school so that to keep them away from streets. And we decide what our children want. And this is a big mistake that we commit. And I believe that this film attested to this reality that if uh, I don't want to uh, put my child away from school, even if he is talented, because we want to be part of the social classification which makes uh, my children acceptable in society. In classes seven to nine, uh, our children will be exposed to uh, different careers. Uh, we will tr try to convince the children that vocational training is favorable because it establishes for a decent living. And also, we are changing the high school system. This terror created by the high school, many people here are smiling because they have gone through this kind of te uh, terror. The uh, children are still in the beginning of their lives, but they are terrorized before entering college because of the high school. Now we are speaking of uh, rockets and space science uh, and uh, People are accessing uh, different planets, but the Arab world are still captives of the high school and the social classification and the grade you get from the high school. We have eliminated this on the 3rd of June. We will have the first high school in Palestine after 54 years of the terror. And we have opened our classes for an additional class for uh, extracurricular activities so that we don't put our children in, th in the same model. And also preschool education has become mandatory because preschool education uh, gives uh, the entry uh, more suitable point of entry. Mr. Nabil, the situation of the Saudi universities is slightly better than the Arab world because if we look about uh, the classification, the ranking uh, of uh, uh, global uh, universities globally, uh, several are uh, uh, Saudi among the best 300. To what extent uh, are these universities preparing their graduates to work in a giant um, company like uh, Aramco? In Saudi Arabia, we are fortunate to have universities that are considered among the best universities in the world. 
during uh, eight years or more, we have attracted uh, the output of these uh, universities. Uh, after working in Aramco, Saudi Arabia, the company sent them for masters and uh, higher uh, education. And we also sent them to un global universities, the best universities in the world. And we noticed that they are uh, they excelled. And they came back to the company, and they were of great benefit to the company. This basic structure is quite important to us. I believe that the company has been fortunate for having such universities. The relationship of Aramco with the universities is strong and sound and strategic. But you don't rely on the universities only. You have certain partnerships, and you have your uh, own academy at Aramco. True. We rely on universities and mostly on other institutions. As His Excellency the Minister said, Our 70% uh, uh, of our employees work or are graduates from the technical education. They have graduated from high schools, but our company brings them and has around 28 training centers all over the kingdom. And uh, during the past years, and frankly speaking, these institutes have graduated several generations and continue to graduate generations for in the, all the sectors of oil and gas. For us, these training centers are among the most important centers that made Aramco have its own internal employees. The rate of Saudi employees is around 90% who work in all sectors. They work in technical issues that face major challenges. And during the past few years, our company took this expertise and exported it to other companies to benefit the country and as part of our social responsibility. To repeat this experience, we have established around 15 academies outside Aramco to serve uh, the private sector outside Aramco. I have a question. If uh, there is a student who has enrolled in the in Aramco Academy, is this enough? Uh, and this person does not need a, a university uh, certificate to be employed at Aramco. It depends on the kind of work, he says. We have many jobs. But uh, work that's such as research and development requires higher education. But. But most of them, for most of them, the high school is enough in addition to two years of training in our academy in certain areas. As for uh, research and technology, of course, this is not enough, but we need more educated people with higher certificates. Mr. Adnan, I would like your opinion. You are a businessman and a lecturer at several uh, universities. I would like your opinion. The problem that we face is that we have talents and we have employment. But the, it is impossible to have talents and employment without an economy. This is an integrated process. What is talent? What are talents? Talents are a potential, human potential. And uh, this is either this is utilized either positively or negatively based on the educational environment in schools and universities and the social environment. So if it is activated in a proper manner, it will give us positive outcome that would lead to creativity at uh, the individual level and at the group level. And also creativity with money through transparent methods. And this by itself would lead to, to a local national product and which constitute a start for a local economy that would lead to employment. Secondly, if the education and the upbringing is negative or not correct, this makes this potential uh, give us a negative outcome that would lead to uh, depression and extremism. This would be an economic extremism rather than investing in people. This by itself, in my opinion, is extremism. Rather than invest in people for five or 10 or 20 years, so that there will be a return on investment even 20 years later. This is important. There will be economic extremism, social extremism, and religious extremism. Therefore, each child has his own potential. 
how can we activate this potential? The educational system in the Arab world is mostly obsolete. And it enhances patriarchy. The first in class, every, children, every child wants to be the first in his class. This leads to depression among children. You cannot be, you cannot rank second or third. You have to rank first. This mentality, in, lasts with children until graduation, and they pers they uh, adopt the same behavior and work. That's why people want to dominate and control socially, politically and elsewhere, this kills the spirit of teamwork and growth and kills the economy. Therefore, we need to focus on personal skills rather than technical skills. There are three points, he says. How can we grow and increase this potential? This happens through education uh, in class one and even before. We have to strengthen teamwork. Teamwork is almost absent. We are successful as individuals, but we fail as groups. Our companies are mostly owned by one person. We do not like to share. This is a very serious issue. And, and our money does not believe in many of the ideas and the brains that exist locally. Therefore, there is a brain drain because of the absence of an enabling environment. Therefore, the educational system must be changed fully starting with class one so that it would allow for uh, neutral specialized committees to get to know the potential and the skill for each child and try to uh, re uh, to uh, strengthen these uh, talents through certain educational systems at the uh, basic education or at the level of secondary education. And this would uh, alleviate the burden of universities upon when they receive the students. Our students concentrate uh, on uh, getting good grades rather than on uh, innovation and creativity. Those who get uh, the grade of 100 or 95 percent in the high school, they would go to school of medicine, although they don't want to go to the school of medicine. Maybe they have some talent in uh, religious studies or uh, the opposite may be true, but we classify our students according to their uh, averages rather than their talent and their creativity. Khadija, I would like your opinion. You are an entrepreneur, and we know that uh, entrepreneurs need technical skills and personal skills, uh, such as leadership and uh, other skills. Have you uh, uh, acquired these skills from uh, the school or university? In the university, uh, the, uh, the university played a strong role in developing my skills. Education. Uh, in education, we need to go to uh, schools uh, for memorizing and for getting knowledge. However, in university, we gain real experience. Um, the, the, the number of years that we spend in university has an impact. We are in the internet era, and everything, all the knowledge exists in the internet, and we can get it online. There is a need for new standards in education. We need to give our students things that they cannot find online, such as uh, the improving their own uh, skills and to open the, uh, give them the enabling opportunity to unleash their potential. So it's a two-way process, not only one way. Uh, the students should not uh, only receive, uh, they, ca they shouldn't be on the receiving side only, but uh, they can also be interactive. Uh, we will take now a short break. Uh, and after the break, uh, we will continue our discussion about education and the uh, women participation in the labor market. Stay with us. Thank you. Just bear with us. Bas, one second. Di bas. Hey. La. Mungkin bas. Tisho. Shahad, bala. Lara. 
هو مش دكتور هو مهندس شكرا للشهاده شهاده البلد اه عيطت لك دكتور عيطت لك دكتور ما عيطت لك دكتور قلت له دكتور ريلي اه اي جات تعليم كمل على السريع ومشاركة المرة أي. أوكي. آه أوكي. Do you have it? أوكي. Thank you. أنا جاهزة. مشاهدو العرب ليديز اند جنتلمان ويلكم تو ذيس سيشن مودريتد باي العربيه ات ويف ذا ديد سي اباوت ذا تالنت ريفولوشن اكسنسي ذا مينستر ليتس جو باك تو ذا توبيك اوف اديوكيشن ذير ار ديماندز ذات سينس وي هاف اباوت تو هاف ا فورث اندستري ريفولوشن And given the very quick changes in the labor market, therefore, the, the changes in the educational sector must keep abreast with such changes. Hence, uh, there are demands for the uh, online education. Currently, the online uh, certificates are not accredited. Do you believe that the Arab countries must accredit the online education certificates? Frankly speaking, yes. The educational system must get out of, this, uh, of the box and to be able uh, to use uh, the high tech uh, to improve the skills of people. As for the accreditation uh, institutions, these take into consideration the concern that this person has not actually studied this material for which he has obtained a certificate. However, it is a very simple process. When a person uh, gets a certificate uh, online, uh, maybe there sh can be an accreditation exam held. Uh, on the subject that he has studied in order to verify that this person has actually acquired the relevant education and that there is no fraud. Therefore, we, we cannot stay away from online education, but we need to speed up our steps towards that education, especially for the Palestinian society that is suffering from a state of isolation. Therefore, uh, online can resolve this problem of access to education. I believe that advancement of education is very important for human advancement. Uh, we cannot speak about economics uh, or startups or technical uh, education improvement or even uh, political competence uh, except through appropriate education. I agree that we need a revolution in education in the Arab world and we need to, to move away from uh, the uh, obsession of certificates. Uh, People have uh, different skills and different potentials, and we need to address uh, these skills uh, away from uh, the uh, memorization uh, uh, strategy that is used in our education. We need to move away from conventional education to deep learning. If a person gets uh, has a certificate uh, through online education, what is your reaction in Aramco? We have figures that show that only 6% of people who have online certificates actually graduate. So is this online education a solution for the problem or we need a hybrid model between online education or distance learning and classroom learning? I need to comment on education first. I have a different uh, point of view from the other panelists. We have spoken a lot about the role of education and the need for change. However, I personally believe that there is a big role for, for companies and the private sector and the parents. In my opinion, education in, is responsible. However, there, there are others who are responsible. Based on our experience in Aramco, we have taken people who have received no education and who come from different traditions from all over the areas of the kingdom and with training. Those persons have become uh, 
senior leaders in the world in their own sectors. True that education plays a role. However, there is a responsibility on the private sector. As for the uh, distance learning and online education, just like most other companies, we not recognize it because there is no international accreditation for these certificates. Not internationally, but in the Arab world, actually. Yes, in the Arab world, he says. But we can also judge the potential of the individual. Maybe this person has potential, but he, this person could not get a uh, conventional certificate, but he uh, received it through distance learning. And so long as he is gifted and through the personal interview, we maybe we can benefit from his talent. We always look for people who, uh, who are of different uh, nature. Uh, sometimes we recruit not only based on the certificate, but on skill. Some say that uh, the uh, illiterate is, not, is the one who does not know coding and programming, for in the future, uh, everything will be focused on uh, mathematics and engineering and other sciences. Should the universities in the Arab world focus on these particular topics, or should we uh, teach the student how to think? The changes in the labor market will be very rapid, and perhaps what we have to teach is to teach how to think. Schools aim to develop the potentials of the child, whether the child is at school or at university level. Education is to give tools uh, to uh, develop the different potentials of the student and his talents given to the, each human being. Each human being has certain talents distinguishing him or her from others, uh, such as the DNA, the fingerprint, uh, and uh, other such examples. And every person is creative. The challenge is how can we find the center of creativity in each person. So far, we do not have such systems. Education is a tool. We have four persons in the world who had, had they been born in our part of the world or studied here, would have uh, died out. Bill Gates, uh, Steve, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, and these are people who do not have uh, university degrees. However, uh, they studied in uh, schools and in an environment, in a family and society in general, who, oh, had they not had uh, such potentials, uh, they uh, were able to develop this uh, into a certain vision, and they had the determination and the passion. This created uh, a big energy in them, which turned into a positive energy, and there was a financial mechanism that invested in them. And they built these big companies, and the big companies, their income is over uh, uh, bigger than the budget uh, of uh, big parts of the world. Hence, we have to have in place mechanisms that, at an early period, will identify uh, these uh, talents among children and uh, nurture them, whatever the class level of the child. In some cases, we might even be dealing with people who have no education. But to identify such talents is a duty, a national duty, and a human duty, and even a religious duty. But no child is the same as the other. Each person is distinguished. We should also put in place mechanisms for increased participation of women. And this mechanism will not be effective and efficient uh, in the absence of democracy and leadership in Arab states. Leadership plays a major role. The leader should have a vision, and we have some examples of this in the Arab region. There has to be a vision in order to lead uh, the people, including uh, the uh, educational and financial and investment systems. If we are to bring about changes, we have to increase the participation of women, which is uh, almost the lowest in Arab countries. 
Are there laws that could protect the rights of women? Perhaps in Morocco, Khadija, there is a law that uh, protects uh, against uh, uh, gender disparity at the labor market. How far is this law efficient? in order to bring about uh, the necessary social and economic revolution that we aspire to in the region, all components uh, of society should uh, participate, and this means men and women, and youth, whether male or female. The sector of youth and the sector of uh, women are rather marginalized today in relation to the economic, social, and political spheres. This marginalization can have its effect on their presence in the economic field because the politicians draw up the laws. And if the, uh, the laws are drawn only by men, then uh, there will be no laws to create the suitable environment for youth and women to enter the labor market in an appropriate manner. Hence the needs and requirements of youth and women from the labor market uh, are different. The world uh, has uh, been uh, tailored out uh, uh, to uh, the priorities of men. Therefore, a woman, uh, 90 days after birth, uh, she has uh, to go back uh, to work without giving any consideration uh, to her rights, uh, perhaps for further um, maternity leave. Uh, for the laws have to be adaptable to the natural situation of each sector of society. Hence, to include uh, uh, women and youth in the political decision making will ultimately lead to the integration of women and youth in the labor market. Conventional uh, companies uh, that have been operating for the last uh, 30 years uh, uh, do not provide the necessary environment uh, for youth uh, to develop their entrepreneurship, which could be in different areas. This may not be only restricted to new technologies. It could be also in the role of youth in different companies. The same applies to women. In job interviews, for example, there are studies that say that uh, women focus more during such interviews on the work culture and the nature of work rather than focusing on the salary they will get which means women have different expectations from the labor market than the uh, company sets. So therefore, have you personally faced difficulties during your work being a woman? I faced what any ambitious uh, young person, man or woman, would face. For the ambitious young person, uh, wants to implement his ideas. Our uh, companies with their conventional methods do not allow the way before new ideas and new initiatives. And if you want to work in a company, you have to be committed uh, to the uh, preset uh, framework. As a woman, there are certain issues that uh, may obstruct. We're speaking of a glass ceiling that exists, uh, a glass ceiling that you cannot go through to advance within uh, the hierarchy of this company. There is uh, no law against, for example, women getting married, but statistics uh, indicate uh, that women are more uh, at the base uh, of the hierarchy than at the upper echelons. This means uh, that uh, a woman who is building a family uh, is obliged not to take up certain jobs. Now, let us move on to another topic. Uh, you are uh, 
managing uh, tens of companies, what is the participation of women in your companies? Over 50 percent, because we are based on teamwork. Any development, any economy, any building of society should have teamwork in it. The team does not mean everybody is the same. It is based on diversity. A team of five persons means each one should be different in their experience and in their way of thinking so that they can come together and build, uh, you, uh, with their uniqueness, build uh, something. So the team is very important. And a female worker is a, a basic component uh, for success. How many of them are in leadership positions? 50%. I have a CEO, a president, a vice president. We do not distinguish between men and women. It is only the qualification uh, that counts. And there are many women who have the qualifications and the experience similar to men or more. With all due respect, the women are more committed than men. This I have noted. <laughs> there are even studies that have demonstrated that, that companies uh, managed by women are more profitable. And uh, women are good at multitasking also. Yes, that is true. And they take their job seriously. Mr. Nabil, how far do women contribute in Aramco at present? We have 35 percent participation for women. Five percent participation of women. But we want to expand this. Let us uh, think of it uh, as a process, as a pipe. And in the new generation, there is a large number of women. And as uh, the doctor has said, Women are more devoted, but their productivity is better, and uh, their achievement uh, in schools and universities is better. So we hope that the future will be positive for women in the Aramco company. There is such an orientation. Yes, there is an orientation, and there is a vision for uh, raising uh, the participation of women from 22 percent to 30 percent. Yes, and Aramco has a major role uh, in this uh, vision between Aramco and GE and Total companies. Uh, they have established a training center for women in Saudi Arabia, where 20,000 uh, women are employed. Uh, and Aramco has taken certain areas, such as uh, business processing, invoice verification, and uh, other work at the IT help desk, and uh, allocated uh, these positions uh, to women, hoping that they will be able managing them in the future, and we hope that in the future the numbers will go up. Your Excellency, at present they say that the Minister of Education should be uh, also the Minister of Labor. So what are the decisions that should be taken to increase the participation of women in the labor market? We do not have a certain quota for the number of women in uh, the different uh, boards of companies. Is this required? Would I want to be both? I would say also the Minister of uh, Finance uh, to spend on uh, education, because we should abandon uh, spending on armament and to devote uh, our money on, uh, to education. We have stored sufficient weapons. Today we have to store uh, uh, the other weapons, uh, human resources. I want to speak of two points. First, it is well known that uh, most uh, of uh, the excellent uh, graduates are uh, females. The second fact, uh, yes, yes, go ahead, please. <laughs> Yes, I know, you support me. The second point is uh, to have mixed schools. I believe that uh, some people consider this to be secondary. I am not for classifying schools between uh, male schools and female schools. With all uh, due respect uh, to all schools of thought that uphold this, we conducted a study in Palestine to see the impact of mixed schools. We found out that males perform better 60% when they are in mixed schools. And I know that uh, the public knows. So you all want to join Palestinian schools. We welcome you. However, uh, the uh, 
performance of uh, females goes down 20% in this case, just to complete the picture. This means uh, devoting uh, attention and respect uh, and for women should start at school. On every Mother's Day, we say this is the mother uh, who nurtured me and uh, she stayed up long nights, etc. And we praise the mother. And then we forget the other side uh, of the coin. Uh, she gave birth to this uh, man and then uh, she raised him. It's a comprehensive process. So it is time to go beyond speaking about quotas. Uh, women are present uh, in uh, the very presence and life of men, and uh, the quota should only be to uh, say that there should be a place, but society should be able to put the right place in the same position, away uh, from uh, any uh, distinction or discrimination. Now, the best figures say that women are somewhere between 16 to 20 percent uh, in the labor market, and this is a very low percentage. Women are also absent from the political scene where decision making takes place. Uh, I do not want to count how many prime ministers in the Arab world are women or how many parliamentarians. It is most important to have uh, women uh, take up their part. When we speak of a revolution, it should address all the concepts of traditional life that we are used to. And unfortunately, in our Arab uh, world, we have seen disasters. Mr. Adnan, there should be a quota for women until we reach a stage where women are truly a main player uh, at uh, the uh, team level. We still have a long way to go in our culture and in our society and some Arab uh, uh, countries, and we have to have until that point. We we have we need a quota, and secondly, teamwork. We have teamwork. Uh, uh, no need for the question. Uh, should the minister of labor also be the minister of education? Because this uh, would also entrench a patriarchal society. One person holds all. We should go back. Uh, to the roots. No, this goes back to the fact that there is a big gap between education and the requirements of the labor market. Now, this might uh, address a systematic issue, but it does not solve all problems. The problem is unemployment and not investing in the human resource. And uh, a creative person uh, gets lost uh, in this whole process, and nobody pays attention uh, uh, to his creativity, and it all turns into a negative energy. We're going to speak about entrepreneurship, but before that, uh, Ms. Raida wanted to make a comment. Uh, We want to hear your voice. Raghida Dargan from Al Hayat newspaper, Beirut uh, Institute. Uh, Mr. Minister, I will protest uh, about the quota because uh, this undermines the ability of women to catch up with society as should be. If we are told that the quota is not up to our level, uh, this is a deception. No, I did not say that. Please do not put words in my mouth. I said that the quota in these days is imposed just to reserve a place. But it is important for society to rise uh, up to a level where we go beyond this and that we focus on qualifications. I said I believe that in many cases women uh, supersede uh, and uh, they achieve better than men and they deserve this. We should support the idea of quota in all Arab countries because women are in need of uh, find, filling their place, and uh, this quota should only be for a transitory period and not permanently. I would like to comment on the quota. In uh, Morocco, we call uh, for we have been calling for a quota since the 70s. And from that period till today uh, hasn't brought us uh, to anything over 30 percent. And currently, women constitute over 50 percent of society. But I agree with a quota if it provides for 50 percent. And then we would say that we are reserving the right uh, share for women. And then in this context, we would choose or select the more qualified, the more achieving women and the more creative women. But the quota 
as we are used to it at 20% or 25% that we find is not sufficient. The quota should be 50%. Very briefly, because we have to take a break, I want to comment on the quota for women. In my opinion, it is very important. And if you allow me, Your Excellency, I will differ with you. In our company, we look on the long term uh, and we look for the areas where women specialize. And it is good to see women entering into fields uh, that were totally monopolized by men in the past. In our decision making, uh, we discuss should we take more women engineers or women in other areas. If we do not do this, then we will not be able to increase the percentage of women. Thank you. We will take a short break and then we return to discuss entrepreneurship and the fourth industrial revolution. Stay with us. Okay. Now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a debate. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, intro bad in the clip. Yes. 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 Welcome you once again to this seminar at the World Economic Forum at the Dead Sea on the talent revolution. Certainly, when we speak of job creation and encouraging talents, we should create an environment of work for entrepreneurship. We have talked to Wael Atili and Mohammed Asfour, who have established the Kharabish Company, a success story in entrepreneurship in the Arab world. We asked them about the challenges they faced, and let us listen to them. فكرة خربيش بلشت بال 2006 2007 تقريبا لما شفنا انه يوتيوب جاي على عم بنتشر بشكل كثير كبير كالعاده طبعا انا مرات بطلع عندي افكار واشياء زي هيك على الام اس ان وقتها كان ام اس ان موجود لقيت عصفور اونلاين فقلت له اسمع انا عندي فكره وطبعا عصفور هي ذا هانتر يعني صياد صراحة ما كان عندنا أي فكرة كيف البزنس موديل راح يكون وكيف لقدام راح يكون مستقبل هاي الصناعة شوفي الأهل هم أهم شيء أكيد هم دعموني بس دعموني بأنهم تركوني براحتي أعمل اللي بدي بس فعليا لا الأهل ولا الأصدقاء ولا حدا فاهم إحنا شو عمالنا بنسوي لبعد فترة ما صار البزنس مفهوم ما هي أبرز التحديات التي واجهتكما؟ مصاري 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 المستثمرين إحنا صراحة محظوظين بالمستثمرين اللي عندنا لأنهم بتعاملوا مع الشركة كأنها شركتهم ومستعدين يشتغلوا معنا لحتى نحقق النجاح السوق نفسه والصناعة نفسها عم تتطور وعم تتغير بشكل كتير بسرعة يعني عم نكون إحنا ما منلحق إنه تماستر إشي بروح بتغير كومبليتلي وبعدين بقلب لإشي تاني أنا راح أكون صريح بعد هذا الجواب. آه طبعاً. أنا أصعب شيء عندي صراحة التوتر انهلكت، انذبحت. اسمعي نكسيوم على بسكوبان على مهدئ. الليفل أوف ستريس اللي عم نواجهه صراحة كثير كبير. لما يكون مستعد إنه يغامر بكل شيء ويخوض التجربة بيكون جاهز لريادة الأعمال. إذا قررت ابنتك أو ابنتك ترك الجامعة لتأسيس عمل خاص بها أتسمح لها بذلك؟ يا باي سؤال محرج أنا بدعمهم 
لانه انا رباب لا راح اكون صريح انا ضد النظام التعليمي في مجتمعاتنا العربيه انا بقول لهم احكوا مع امكم انا ما دخل <تصفيق> انا ما بدخل هو هالحكي هذا ما راح يجي بمرتي اكيد يعني هو الديبيت هذا دائما موجود اي وود تشالنج ذم اي وود تشالنج ذم يعني بتحداهم انا انا من الناس اللي رحت على اهلي قلت لهم بديش اكمل جامعه وما رضيوا وكثير انا مبسوط انهم ما خلوني اترك الجامعه اذا واضح هانس اس ام ايز نيد ماني نيد فاندنج اونلي 8% of banking loans go to financing SMEs, uh, which uh, we can compare to 16% and 20% uh, uh, for richer countries. Uh, though we have uh, many uh, institutions that support the SMEs, why hasn't it reached the level? I'm glad you selected uh, the Kharabish experience because they have uh, mixed up the whole method of thinking. The, ch the world has changed. First, we used to, uh, in the past, we used to select what our children should wear. Uh, today, our children uh, choose uh, what smartphones you should carry in your pockets or what computer you should buy. Hence, we should ask them uh, uh, what future they prefer. And if they choose, we should not uh, interfere or tell them we know more than you do and you should go and study this or that at the university. Some Sometimes we find uh, some students want to think outside the box or establish SMEs. In the Arab world today, a person might think of establishing a company on the internet or making use of technology in one way or, or the other. As long as uh, the generation of parents are not very close to, this, uh, develop, to these developments, they will not be able to contribute positively. In the past, uh, a child who used to love to play football, they would say he's wasting his time. Today, one of the most important sources of money making comes through playing football uh, or waste time th singing. Today, among big money makers are those who are involved in the world of art and singing. Mm -hmm. Hence, we should allow space for such talents. And in our schools, the curriculum should uh, encourage uh, entrepreneurship and the establishment of entrepreneurial projects, and not to think of joining the public sector. Most people uh, want uh, or seek uh, a stable uh, job that gives them health care and social security which only the public sector can provide. But this sector is saturated, and it will not absorb anyone. Hence, we should uh, encourage our uh, children uh, to go into companies such as Kharabish and other such companies. The Arab world today is more accepting of uh, SMEs, but uh, not uh, as much as we thought they would be in the past. Mr. Adnan, have you found problems of uh, financing in the past? I stayed here for some six months trying to uh, garner uh, Arab uh, capital, uh, but unfortunately there was no suitable culture or environment for investing in the unknown, which is uh, science. Uh, they are ready to invest in something tangible, such as a hotel, but uh, to invest in uh, knowledge and science, uh, this did not exist at the time. I went to the States. I expect that things have improved now. There are many ideas. I receive many proposals. Some of them are very good. However, the investor uh, seeks uh, political stability and uh, a nurturing environment for this uh, stability. And the creative person also wants that. Now, in the presence of political stability and leadership uh, in the country where this creative person is, then the two could meet, the businessman and the creative person, and mechanisms could be established for investing in such uh, projects. Uh, we're talking of seed money and angel money and uh, first round, second round milestone investments. This is very important, and many Arab countries do have stability, and I hope there will be more than one fund uh, or uh, finance uh, projects uh, that will invest uh, in such 
creative ideas uh, that are still in need of activation uh, at stage zero or stage one, and the investment uh, would uh, be in reasonable amounts, $100,000, for example, or whatever. This would be an investment in uh, an unknown, but this is most important uh, for building a local economy that would be part of the global uh, system. Had it not been for the internet, social media, Facebook, Instagram, we would not have found the inspiration for all uh, the young people we have here. However, there are also many local ideas in light of the problems we face and the needs we have. And I hope that there will be stability and that there will be a strategy on the part of some Arab countries that do live in stability to focus on such important projects. For it is such projects that create uh, the qualitative move uh, to reach the status uh, of the global uh, level. Now, Mr. Nabil, uh, there are ambitious plans for SMEs in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Therefore, in the vision, uh, there is uh, uh, a plan to increase the share of the SMBs from 20% to 35% and uh, to have the investments go up from 5% to 20% by the year 2030. Now, you in Aramco have plans uh, to, through the ICTIFA program to uh, finance uh, such uh, companies. ICTIFA is uh, uh, the uh, acronym for uh, value added. So we aim at uh, localization of industry. Secondly, is the trainees would be Saudis. We are bringing in industries that do not exist currently in the Saudi Arabia. We are reaching agreements with contractors. To, who provide equipment to, for Aramco to manufacture a large share of it uh, uh, that would reach 70% in the long term uh, in Saudi Arabia and uh, made by local hands. This way we have resolved two problems. First, create jobs that do not exist now and create local industries. Hence, uh, we will achieve economic growth and in the long run, these industries uh, will start to export uh, outside Saudi Arabia. Other than Iktiva, we have another program called Waed. Uh, Aramco has established a department that focuses on SMEs and entrepreneurship. As was mentioned in the video, uh, we are in need of uh, developing business plans and how a person who is 18 or 19 years old, uh, how this person can start up a business and uh, how this uh, business will start to expand. Uh, our program collects the ideas. Uh, our colleagues uh, interview these people and evaluate the, uh, the ideas or the proposals. After that, they move with them step by step until they uh, achieve success. We have uh, such examples uh, that have been successful. We have a company in Khobar that has resolved almost the problem of youth. The name of the company is Safe Road, and they have developed a driving monitoring device that would be uh, installed in cars for the young people that would uh, give us the behavior of those persons, whether they are reckless in their driving, and we have used uh, this device in Aramco, and uh, this was one of the top 100 uh, companies that have won in this forum. And there are other technology companies uh, that are developing technologies used by Aramco. Uh, Khadija, I would like your opinion. To what extent has technological uh, development uh, given uh, a new potential, a new room for uh, SMEs to have to be successful? Before responding to this question, allow me to speak about the previous point. First, about financing. I believe that women have more problems in uh, having access to uh, bank loans because banks have laws that prevent women from access to finance and they ask for collateral 
uh, in the Arab world and in the world in general, women have less access to property and because women do not have the uh, guarantees uh, that would enable them to have access to bank loans. Most Women have to stay in their enterprises as small or micro enterprises, and they do not have the ability to improve and expand and to employ more people because they do not have access to finance. The second point is that we have heard about, uh, about several initiatives. I need to speak about the initiatives in Morocco. Uh, Morocco uh, has a unique uh, geographic position. We are in uh, North Africa and Middle East, but we are very close to Europe and the United States. Uh, to move from Casablanca to USA, the, the flight is very short, and it's equal to uh, Casablanca to Dubai. This means that we are open to cultures and open to technology. We have adopted uh, strategies that made us open to high uh, new technology. We have the business parks that have opened and the, that have employed 10 to 15,000 persons and have different kinds of teams. Uh, the other important point is uh, these, the accelerating strategy which has led several big companies uh, in aerospace or in other uh, sectors that to uh, hire a large number of uh, youth. And uh, there is a lot of uh, know-how transfer that is happening in Morocco. As for high tech, this has opened uh, a room for the youth and women. These have enabled women to work from home, and this was not possible before. This mentality is uh, facilitating access to the labor market. And for the youth, they have uh, more uh, uh, room for employment because it is possible for them to work from home or uh, remotely. Maybe uh, we can discuss this topic for hours, but the time is uh, up. Uh, we thank you uh, for your pre for your participation. And uh, uh, unfortunately, we did not have any room for uh, discussion from the audience. Maybe we can continue our discussions outside. Uh, we thank you for, and this was a session from the World Economic Forum.